So why should you choose one motherboard over another? <laughs> Today I'm looking at the Dark Hero Crosshair 8 motherboard from ASUS. And this is one of the more expensive motherboards that you can buy. I mean, there's motherboards that are twice as expensive as this. But the real question is, what do you need as a consumer? When you're looking at a motherboard, if you ask the question, would one motherboard perform better than another motherboard for any given CPU? Uh, and the, the answer isn't really no, but the answer isn't really yes either. If you were to take a B550 motherboard and an X570 motherboard and drop in a 3600 XT CPU in both systems, both CPUs are gonna work pretty much the same. Some higher end motherboards come with kind of like a factory overclock built into the motherboard, kind of baked in, that allows the CPU to run a little bit faster, giving you the perception that the CPU is performing better, when it really isn't. Uh, you can, of course, have motherboards that allow you to overclock or not overclock. Um, systems that push the CPU a little bit more right out of the box and systems that don't. At the end of the day, the other components that you choose to install on your motherboard, like your CPU, your graphics card, your RAM, all of these components have a limitation to how well they'll run regardless of which motherboard you put them in. Should you run out and grab the cheapest motherboard available on the market? Well, no, but you also don't necessarily need to go out and run out and buy the most expensive motherboard either. If you want to buy the most expensive motherboard for bragging rights and you're going with a 5950X processor, or you're going with a 3090, then sure, go with the flagship motherboards that have all the bells and whistles and support heavy duty overclocking. But if you're going to be putting a 5800X or 5900X air cooled into a top end motherboard and you're not planning on doing any heavy overclocking, uh, there may not be as many advantages to going with a higher end motherboard versus a mainstream motherboard. For example, a B550 motherboard and an X570 motherboard both support PCI Express 4.0. They both support that for the graphics card as well as one of their M.2 slots. Now, if you're running two M.2 slots and you're going to invest the money in PCI Express 4.0 M.2 drives, then getting a higher end motherboard or an X570 motherboard at the very least is gonna be the way to go. If what you're planning on buying though is only supporting PCI Express 3.0, uh, then there's really little benefit to moving to a PCI Express 4.0 system like an X570. So what about a B450 motherboard? If you were to go directly into B450, you're gonna be limited to PCI Express 3.0. That being said, if you're gonna go with a PCI Express 3.0 M.2 drive, and you're going with a 3070 or a 3080 RTX, or maybe even an older 20 series card, um, the B450 system is gonna perform just as admirably as an X570 system. So one of the main things you need to consider when looking at a motherboard is what features do you actually want? If you're only planning on putting in one M.2 drive or maybe no M.2 drives at all, then something like a B450 would be perfectly fine. You could even go with a cheaper motherboard, maybe an ITX or mini ITX motherboard that supports uh, four to six SATA ports if you're only gonna be doing a SATA hard drive. Really, for me, the main reason to look at one motherboard versus another comes down to the number of ports that are available. So for me, I like to have a lot of USB devices. Something like the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero comes with plenty of USB ports for you to use and plug in all your devices. Whereas if you look at some of the lower end motherboards, you may only have four USB ports or six USB ports, uh, where you kind of have to pay a little bit extra if you want to get into the eight to 10 USB ports. So why would anyone ever go and buy a Dark Hero board or even some of the more extreme motherboards that are available that are fully water cooled right out of the box? Well, the real reason to go with a Dark Hero board is for overclocking. If you're planning on water cooling and you're planning on doing some extreme overclocking and you really want to eke out that last little bit of performance out of your system, then you're going to want to spend the money and invest in a higher end motherboard. But that being said, you could take a 5950X, you could still water cool it, you could still put it in, an, in any other X570 motherboard and still get similar performance. Um, when you're looking at overclocking, performance boost overclock and these other different features, uh, you're gonna have maybe a little bit of difficulty getting into higher, more stable overclocks if you have a VRM on your motherboard that maybe doesn't support that. The Crosshair 8 Dark Hero has a 90 amp VRM, which is totally, completely overkill for a 5950X. I like to look at power this way. If your system is gonna draw 600 watts, does that mean you can put in a 600 watt power supply? Well, no. 
you don't want to be stressing all the components. You typically on any system don't want to be stressing the components more than probably 75 to 85%. If you're driving a car and your red line is 7,000 RPM, and you're literally always keeping that car sitting at 7,000 RPM, you're wearing that engine out a lot quicker. And the same thing applies to the computer systems. If your power supply is rated at 750 watts, and you're always drawing 685 watts from that system, keeping in mind that they only are 80% to 90% efficient, um, you're pushing that power supply right to the limit. Power supplies wear out over time. So over the course of four to six years, you may find that the power supply no longer provides sufficient power for you to be able to power all of your components. You always wanna have a little more than you need, probably by about 20%. When engineers design a bridge, they build in certain tolerances so that you know they say, well, this bridge can hold 40,000 tons of weight before it collapses. Well, so they don't say, okay, well, we can put 40,000 tons worth of vehicles on here uh, before it'll collapse. No, they, you know, if a bridge is to be rated at 40,000 tons, they're going to build it to be able to handle 65 or 75,000 tons so that there's tolerances, there's the ability for it to last over time with things like metal fatigue. And we have to keep that in mind with electronics as well, is that the electronic components do suffer from fatigue eventually, and eventually they wear out and stop working. So what should you be looking at if you're looking at buying a motherboard? Well, look at the number of ports on the back. Are there a sufficient number of ports for what you need? Look at what kind of storage you want to get. If you want to get a whole bunch of SATA storage, then you got to make sure it has a lot of SATA ports. If you want to do M.2 storage, make sure it has M.2 ports. If you're going to spend money and get all of the latest and greatest parts, then just go out and buy the most expensive thing. Um, but ultimately, you only need to buy enough motherboard to do what you're using it for today. Now, if you are going out and, and you're going, I want to future-proof my system, well, buying a PCI Express 4.0 motherboard is going to help make your system last a little bit longer. It'll be able to handle more bandwidth and throughput from higher end graphics cards over the coming years, higher end uh, drives over the coming years, although we're already seeing PCI Express 4.0 drives that are maxing out the bandwidth. If we look at two years or three years into the future, we're probably gonna see PCI Express 5.0, probably sometime late 2021 or early 2022. And then we're gonna see PCI Express 6.0, possibly early 2022 or mid to late 2023. Uh, it all depends on what the manufacturers wanna do um, and how much they're able to sell current systems with current technology. Obviously they wanna, if they build 10 of one thing, they wanna sell all 10 before they build the new thing. So if you're looking at buying a motherboard, don't pay attention to buying the best, the latest and the greatest. Uh, unless you plan on doing high-end overclocking, you can go for something like a B550 motherboard or even a B450 motherboard if you're not intending on putting anything really powerful in that system. If you wanna go with something that can be upgraded down the road, then an X570 system is probably the best that you're gonna be able to get right now for longevity. Now I don't want you to be running out and buying the cheapest motherboard that's available. Um, one of my rules when doing a system build is that you don't want to cheap out on the motherboard. You want to go with something that's at the same level as all the other hardware that you're planning on picking out. So if you're planning on building a budget system, you don't need an X570 motherboard. Uh, you will probably be fine with a B450 motherboard with less features. If you're looking at doing a budget build with an AMD CPU today, then going with a B450 motherboard would be probably the best route to go. If you're going with more of a mid-range system, then a B550 would have a little bit more bandwidth with PCI Express 4.0 uh, and allow you to utilize PCI Express 4.0 M.2 storage. If you uh, wanna go extreme, then X570 is definitely the way to go. But again, when you're looking at motherboards, look at how many USB ports do you need? Uh, you can always buy a second USB hub, an external USB hub, but you might as well get what you need right out of your motherboard. Does your motherboard support the CPU that you want and the amount of RAM that you need? Some motherboards don't really support overclocking on RAM as well as others, so you wanna look at what speed of RAM you're getting. You know, when I build a system, I build every five to seven years, and so I'm looking at getting five to seven years out of that hardware. Um, I usually will do one graphics card update between system upgrades. So I'm not overly concerned about things like the socket being retired. Um, AM4 sockets on AMD are being retired, so this is the last time they're gonna build that socket. The new AMD processors that come out late 2021 are gonna be using a new chipset and a new socket. So we're gonna see the AM4 socket be completely retired and replaced with something new to coincide with PCI Express 5.0 as well. Does that mean you'll need to rush out and buy a PCI Express 5.0? Absolutely not. Even if you have a PCI Express 3.0 
motherboard today, you can still use uh, a newer CPU, you can still use a newer GPU, so you can go with 30 series, and you're still gonna be fine running on PCI Express 3.0. You gotta remember the 10900K is only PCI Express 3. So you do have some very slight advantages moving to PCI Express 4.0, especially in the storage spaces. But with PCI Express 5.0 right around the corner, if your current computer does what you need it to do, then you might as well hold off and see what's coming down the pipeline.